Okay. I am honored to present the keynote address of, uh, at this two-day national conference with the team uh, Sustainable Funding for Transport Infrastructure Development in Nigeria. I am particularly delighted at the foresighted leadership of the Nigerian Institute of Transport Technology, NITT, for initiating a high-level conference that has brought together great minds from the various sectors of the economy to dissect this relevant theme. Ladies and gentlemen, you will all agree with me that infrastructure is a bedrock on which the social economic development of a nation rests. It supports the territorial structure of any national economy, enhances the production and distribution network of key sectors in the economy, and promotes overall economic growth. Infrastructure involves capital assets and basic systems required to maintain institutions and ensure delivery of services to the people. Transportation is a major component for infrastructural development and a key catalyst of economic activity through the movement of people and goods. There is hardly any aspect of a nation's development that transport is not essential considering the continuous need to collect, assemble, transfer, and distribute goods, services, and people from one place to another. Similarly, an adequate transportation infrastructure is an indispensable facilitator of economic diversification and a trigger of a country's economic progress. It is in the realization of this that the Nigerian government is making tremendous progress in changing the trajectory of the transportation sector in the country by embarking on the implementation of multimodal transport system and the revitalization program, as well as huge transport infrastructure investment across the country. These interventions by the Federal Minister of Transportation include massive construction of roads, rail lines with access roads, inland water ports, seaports, new terminals in existing ports, dry ports with access to roads and rail, the inland container depot and freight, all geared towards building a modern and efficient transportation system that guarantees sustainable socio-economic development of Nigeria. <clears throat> Also of relevance is the development of adequate manpower to ensure efficiency and sustainability of the transportation sector. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, notable achievements of the transportation sector include the rehabilitation of the narrow gauge line and construction of the standard gauge lines along Abuja Kaduna, Lagos Ibadan, Wari Itakwe, recently commissioned and made operational development of the national freight offices, commissioning of the Deep Blue Sea project, and putting in place proper regulations in the road subsector to provide an enabling and competitive environment for road transport operators. Ladies and gentlemen, it is pertinent to state that the establishment of these transport infrastructures are capital intensive as such, government keeps clamoring for private sector investment, joint venture financing, and other financing st strategies to ease government expenditure. To this end, various methods have been devised in financing transport infrastructures, and these include users' charges, taxation, appropriation, concessioning through build, operate, and transfer, BOT, or build, own, operate, and, and transfer, boot, among other privatization methods. In the rail subsector, a co-financing loan agreement was signed by the China Export Import Bank to finance some rail projects. Similarly, in the maritime subsector, concession agreements have been signed by terminal operators and other, other private sector companies for the development of the inland dry ports and the deep sea ports. I am also aware the financing and investment strategies have also been incorporated in the draft national transport policy currently being reviewed for the development of the modes of transportation, particularly the road south sector. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the choice of this theme is apt considering the global economic downturn due to dwindling oil prices, thus affirming the need for economic diversification. 
I am optimistic that a team of experts and participants assembled in this hall today will come up with strategies and a sustainable financing framework for the development of the nation's transport infrastructure. Finally, I would like to appeal to all participants to partake actively in the conference as well as take advantage of this unique opportunity to make robust contributions that will transform and sustain the transportation sector. I wish you all a fruitful deliberation. Thank you and God bless. Approved in May by His Excellency the President. This number of new roads now brings to 33 roads within the country covering 26 states and covering all the six geopolitical zones. This road infrastructure has been delivered at high quality, high speed for the benefit of the people but the businesses that are building them also are serving their own businesses, which, which are most, most likely uh, mostly along those corridors. This we have found to be extremely useful and has progressed significantly. One road that you have heard about is the Boni Bodo Road, which is now at about 50% completion, built by the NLNG with their own resources. As of today, the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning through the FRS, have issued tax credits in the sum of 78 billion naira to date towards this scheme. We have made sure that the executive order is designed in such a way that our fiscal revenues uh, 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 in any particular year are protected from being too much eroded by this scheme. So we have set a target that no company will recover more than 50% of its taxable income in any particular year. We have seen an upsurge of expression of interest on this scheme by investors, Nigerian investors. We've also designed the tax credits that are issued to be tradable in the capital market, again providing another opportunity to deepen the Nigerian capital market by this instrument, which is largely designed to deliver on road infrastructure. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that my ministry will be able to partner with NITT in, as you uh, train um, uh, your institution that is specializing in training on transport infrastructure to look into other alternative options similar to the RITC that will provide financing sources to our country. And also, with the core of experts that I've seen have been pulled together, that at the end of the meeting today, of this program today, that we'll be looking at how to remodel the RITSC to form other kind of financing options that can be viable, sustainable, and attractive to both foreign and local investors. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind attention.